What is going on, guys? This is Talking Sports Slate, and today I am back for a new video for you guys today. Today, guys, I'm going to be doing my very first mock draft of uh, the, like, I guess, 2021 NFL season. This is actually an in-season mock draft. But I'll have tons more mock drafts in the off-season of the NFL. So, guys, what I'm planning on doing, I think I might have maybe one or two mock drafts each month until October. I mean, not October, until April. So, I'll have maybe two in January, two in February, two in March, and then, like, two in April. Maybe, like, I think I'm going to do one, like, the week or maybe, like, the week of the draft. But today's just my first mock draft. And, uh, so yeah, guys, let's just get right into it. So, at pick number one, I have Kevon Thibodeau going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars are a rebuilding team. Um, they're looking for a brand new head coach, and I think Kevon Thibodeau could help them, uh, not win games, because, I mean, he can't win the games alone, but, I mean, I think he would help them in the rebuilding process in Jacksonville. Pick number two, the Detroit Lions. I have them picking the players that I want my Giants to pick. Aiden Hutchinson, Edge out of Michigan. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson is my favorite player in this draft class. Um, he's just a great football player. He's a great edge. He can get to the quarterback. He can stop the run. He's very dominant. But I do think he will go second to the Lions. And I think he will also help out Dan Campbell over there in Detroit with the Lions. With pick number three, the Houston Texans select Derek Stangley Jr., cornerback at LSU. The Texans are a very uh, rebuilding team. They uh, have head coach David Cooley, I think. Derek Stingley will be a good would be a good pick for the Texans. I've heard a lot of great things about him. I don't know much about him, but I've heard a lot of great things about uh, Derek Stingley, Stingley Jr. But uh, I uh, I do think he would be a good pick for the Texans at number three, and I think that's I think that's going to be about where he gets picked, top three, top four. But uh, yeah, I think I think he would be a pretty good fit for the Texans. Pick number four, we have the New York Jets selecting uh, George Karaliftis. Edge out of Purdue. He is, um, in my opinion, the third ranked edge in this draft. I have Kevon Thibodeau, uh, first edge, and I have Aiden Hutchinson as the second one. Even though I like Aiden Hutchinson better than Kevon Thibodeau, uh, I still have Kevon Thibodeau at number one in the draft. Um, even though I think Aiden Hutchinson is the better edge rusher, in my opinion, but I think that, uh, Kara Leftis out of Purdue would be really good for the Jets. He's a very dominant player. And he's even one of the players that I would wish the Giants to draft, but I don't think that happens. So yeah. So on the pick number five, we've got my New York Giants selecting Evan Neal, offensive tackle out of Alabama. Uh, he's I think he's a left tackle. He would be probably the best offensive tackle in my opinion. I think he'd be the best tackle for the Giants because the Giants we all know is it have a terrible offensive line, and I think he would really help boost up the offensive line. And he's not a left tackle. Andrew Thomas left tackle. Sorry. Um, but, uh, I, he would not be playing left tackle if he was because Andrew Thomas is a left tackle for the Giants, but yeah, Evan Neal would help bulk up this offensive line, I think, a lot, an offensive line that needs a lot of help, but, uh, yeah, so I think Evan Neal, I, I'd happy, I would be so happy to have Evan Neal drafted by the Giants, so yeah. So, uh, number six, we got the Carolina Panthers selecting Ikeem Akawanu, offensive tackle out of NC State, once again, I think it would be a good fit for them. I think it will uh, boost up an offensive line that really needs a boost. Okay, so at pick number seven, we have Car Charles Cross, offensive tackle on a Mississippi State. This will help uh, for the Jets. This will help uh, protect the young quarterback, Zach Wilson. Uh, they need offensive line protection. They have Elijah Vera Tucker, Mackay Becton. But I think Charles Cross would really boost up this offensive line if they did decide to go offensive line. I think Charles Cross would be the best one to go here at number seven. And I think it would, and I, I it would really boost up the Jets' offensive line and help Zach Wilson and uh, what's the running back's name? I forgot what the running back's name is, but um, yeah, it would help him get holes to run through and help Zach Wilson. All right, so on pick number eight, we have Kenyon Green going to the New York Giants once again. Another offensive lineman, which I would love. Uh, in this mock draft, I don't think. Oh no, I had I have Tyler I have Tyler Linderbaum going a lot uh, later in the first round. To a team that is actually very interested, that is actually very interesting that I have going to. Uh, but Kalon Green, I think, would also, I mean, these offensive linemen, I mean, they would all help boost up. But I think if the Giants got Evan Neal and uh, Kenyon Green, I really do think the Giants offensive line could be really dominant, like, next year, two years from now. But 
I just really hope the Giants just don't miss. You know, they just they just don't miss on a good pick. Like they just get good picks all this draft. But I do think to start off a good draft would either get two offensive tackles or uh, an offensive tackle or edge. I would definitely advise going offensive tackle, of uh, either first or second. Definitely first or second pick. Definitely need to do offensive tackle. But I definitely would love to uh, go edge two. But I honestly feel like. Uh, uh, taking two tackles to boost up the offensive line would be probably the better option for the Giants because we don't want Daniel Jones to be on his back every single play, and it seems like he's always on his back every single play. All right, so pick number nine, we have the Washington football team. I don't know why it says Washington, Washington, but we have the Washington football team. It's like in Kenny Pickett, quarterback out of Pittsburgh. He was, I think he was a Heisman. Tr- no, I don't think he, I forget what he was. Um, I th- I forget if he was a Heisman Trophy candidate, but Kenny Pickett, quarterback out of Pittsburgh, uh, he, I think he would be a really good fit for Ron Rivera and uh, Washington. I think he he would have weapons. Uh, he would have a we- he would have weapons like Terry McLaurin, Ricky Seals Jones, uh, Adam Humphreys, uh, backup wide receiver. So yeah, I think Kenny Pickett would be a good pick here for a Washington football team. Okay, so on the pick number ten, we have David Ajabo, edge out of Michigan for the Atlanta Falcons. I think this will help the Falcons defense. I think it will boost up their defense a lot. Uh, I do think David Ajabo is about the fourth best edge in this draft. I do think he's a, I do think he has very good upside, and I do think he could be a very dominant edge rusher. He played with Aiden Hutchinson in college, uh, so yeah, I do think he'll be a very good edge rusher in the NFL with the Atlanta Falcons. All right, so on with pick number eleven, we have the Denver Broncos selecting Matt Coral, quarterback out of Ole Miss. Once again, I think it would be a good pick for the Broncos. Nothing really to say here, but I think I think it'd be a really good pick. Uh, he would get weapons like Corton Sutton. Of uh, Jerry Judy, Noah Fan at tight end. Yeah, he would get he Malvin Gordon at running back. He would be put in, in my opinion, a pretty good spot in Denver. Uh, Matt Corral would. Okay, so on the pick number twelve, Minnesota Vikings select Kyle Hamilton, safety out of Notre Dame. Um, I think the Vikings could use a guy like him. I think that uh, uh the Vikings need defense because their defense is, in my opinion, the Vikings are not good, and I think Kyle Hamilton would help them, uh, boost up their defense a lot. So yeah. I think the Vikings go Kyle Hamilton with this 12th pick. With the 13th pick, the Cleveland Browns like Jordan Davis, uh, inside defensive lineman out of Georgia. I think this will help the Browns a lot, going along with Miles Garrett. See, the Browns, they're eliminated from playoff contention. I think getting the right draft, I think they could probably be a Super Bowl team in a few years, just getting into the just getting the right draft. And uh, I think that uh, they can they can be really good in a few years. Well, then in a few years, I think they can be good next year. I think they can be Super Bowl team next year. They weren't; they're not terrible this year, but they're not going to the playoffs like a lot of teams. But yeah, Jordan Davis, I think, would uh, help them a lot. All right, so number fourteen, we got the Philadelphia Eagles selecting Andrew Booth Jr., quarterback out of Clemson. Um, as much as I hate the Eagles, I think this would be a really good pick for them. Is they need cornerback? Well, they could use some quarterback depth because in, in case of like Darius Slay, Stephen Nelson got injured. They could, uh, they could get depth in Andrew Booth Jr., who I think would be br- really good for the Eagles. So, yeah, I think uh, pick number 14 will be Andrew Booth Jr. All right, so on the pick number 15, we have the New Orleans Saints selecting a quarterback. We have them selecting uh, Sam Howell, quarterback out of North Carolina. I think Sam Howell is, I would give him probably, probably about, uh, out of 10, out of about five stars, I'd probably give him like a four and a half star rating. I think he's a really good quarterback. He's one of the best in these in this draft. I think Kenny Pickett is the best in the draft. Uh, I think Sam Howell would be about two or three in the in this draft, like in quarterback ranking. Um, Sam Howell is a very good quarterback out of North Carolina. I think the Saints need a quarterback like this to go along with Sean Payton's playbook, and uh, I think Sam Howell would be a good fit for the Saints. All right, so on the pick number sixteen, we have the Baltimore Ravens selecting Chris Olave, wide receiver out of Ohio State. Now, I know what you guys are probably thinking they have Rashad Bateman and they also have Marquise Brown, Miles Boykin, and all of them. Why would they need Chris Olave? Chris Olave can is very dominant. He is a very dominant wide receiver, and I think the Ravens could use a guy like him, especially because it's not bad to have wide receiver depth, especially wide receivers, because you don't know how many receivers you'll have. You don't know how many will get injured. So, and like wide receivers can get injured. Um, pretty fast like they can the wide receiver position gets I th- I would say maybe in my opinion is probably like the most not injured position but I would say a lot of wide receivers get injured because they're running all the time but yeah I think Chris Olave would be really good depth 
and I think he'd also be a starting wide receiver maybe about a year or two for the Baltimore Ravens if they do decide to take him. I right, so here's the interesting pick of like the entire first round. The Bush the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting Tyler Linderbaum, offensive lineman out of Iowa. He's a center. I think it would be a good pick. I know that they need a quarterback. But I do think their quarterback, I think they'll find their quarterback in the second round. I think they could pick Malik Lillis in the second round out of uh, Liberty. Um, he's probably, Malik Lillis is probably my fourth, fifth best quarterback in this draft. He's not bad. He's a really good quarterback out of Liberty. But if they do select Tyler Linderbaum, they can get a protector for him. Uh, Marquise Pouncey retired last year. This would fill in, this will fill in some knees on the offensive line. So, yeah, this will boost up the Steelers offensive line and Tyler Linderbaum. All right, so on to pick number 18, we have the Las Vegas Raiders selecting Garrett Wilson. Um, they hardly have any good wide receivers, in my opinion. Uh, Garrett Wilson, I think, would help would help with the Raiders and Derek Carr. Derek Carr's also got weapons like Darren Waller. He's got a running back, Josh Jacobs, and Kenyon Drake. But, yeah, I do think Garrett Wilson would be a really good fit for the Raiders here at pick 18. All right, pick number 19, we have the Philadelphia Eagles selecting DeMarvin Lee, uh, D-lineman out of Texas A&M. I don't really know much about him, but uh, I think the Eagles could pick defensive line. Sometimes in this draft, I think they couldn't even pick it in the first round because, they're, in my opinion, the def their defensive line is pretty uh, thin, in my opinion. But, yeah, I do think uh, they could easily be picking uh, defensive line and maybe even DeMarvin uh, Lee in the first round. I right, saw so on the pick number 20, we had the Los Angeles Chargers selecting Trayvon Walker at Jada, Georgia. I mean, this will help uh, the Chargers, you know, pairing him up with Joey Bosa. I mean, that would be pretty sick if they could pair him up with Joey Bosa. So, yeah. So on the pick number 21, the Philadelphia Eagles select safety Jaquan Brisker out of Penn State. He would be playing in the state where he plays, where he plays, where he played his college football uh, in Pennsylvania. But... I, as much as I hate the Eagles, I do not want them to get a single good player this draft, but I really think Jaquan Brisker would be a great fit for the Eagles. I think he would be great. I think he would be great with the Eagles, too. And I think the Eagles would get a really good player if they pick Jaquan Brisker. Okay, so on the pick number 22, we have the Miami Dolphins selecting James Jameson Williams, wide receiver out of Alabama. He has a quarterback in Bryce Young throwing it to him in college. He has Tua Tagovailoa, former Alabama quarterback. Uh throwing it to him if the Dolphins do uh, draft Jameson Williams. So, yeah, I think this would be a good pick for the Dolphins, and and he, uh, um, I think you'd, I think you'd do really well with two in the Dolphins. All right, so on pick number 23, we have Roger McCreary, cornerback out of Auburn. Um, I think he would be a good fit for the Patriots. I really don't know much about him either, but I think he would help their, their defensive cornerback position. So on the pick number 24, we have the Arizona Cardinals selecting a Nicholas Pettit Fury off of the tackle out of Ohio State. It can give them some offensive line depth. It can boost up their offensive line. Because it's never hey, it's never too bad to have any too many offensive linemen. I mean, the Giants offensive line is terrible and they don't have they have they have a good bit of depth on the offensive line, but their offensive line is terrible. So yeah. So on the pick number 25, we have the Buffalo Bills selecting Trevor Penning, offensive tackle out of northern Iowa. Um I think it would help the I help I think it would help the Bills offensive line a lot if they did select Trevor Penning, I'd, I'd pick twenty five or any even any pick. All right, so on the pick number twenty six, I got the since we have the Cincinnati Bengals selecting Devin Lloyd linebacker out of Utah. I think I think that it'll, I think it will help the defense. Um, I think I think I think what Zach Taylor's doing in Cincinnati, I really like what he's doing in Cincinnati. They can bring in a they can bring in a really good uh, defensive weapon in Devin Lloyd out of Utah in Cincinnati. I think that'd be really good if they did. On the pick number twenty seven, we have the Dallas Cowboys selecting Dexon Hill, uh, safety from Michigan. Um, it would help the Cowboys, I, in my opinion. Um, the Cowboys are a very loaded defensive team. Uh, I think this pick would be a good pick for them. You know, depth. Safety depth, and then also like he could also be starting some games too, because you never know if injuries too. Um, he would, he would also be starting too probably. So yeah, on pick number twenty eight, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Darian Ken Kennard, out inside alignment out of Kentucky, uh, and then pick number twenty nine, we got Nakobe Dean, linebacker out of Georgia. Um, I think both of those players for both teams would both help, uh, both those teams. So yeah, I think. Okay, uh, 
Pick number 30, we've got the Detroit Lions selecting Jahan Dotson, wide receiver out of Penn State. Jahan Dotson is one of the best wide receivers in this draft, in my opinion. I, he's probably about maybe fourth, third on my list. He's really good. And I think it, I think the Detroit Lions need a weapon like uh, Jahan Dotson. You know, they do decide to stick with Jared Goff. Uh, it would be a good weapon for Jared Goff to have in Detroit. So, yeah, on the pick number 31... We have got the Tennessee Titans selecting Ahmed Gardner, cornerback in Cincinnati. He allowed, I think, no touchdowns in his college career in Cincinnati. So I think this would be a really good pick um, for the Tennessee Titans. So on the last pick, pick 32, Jamari Johnson, edge out of Florida State for the Green Bay Packers. So, yeah, he can go along with Sedarius Smith on the defensive line. And I think the Packers would have two really dominant edge rushers. So, yeah, guys. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this mock draft, make sure you subscribe and hit the, and hit the like button down below. And guys, uh, tell me what your opinion on, on these picks are. So yeah, so this is Talking Sports Atlanta, and I'm out. Peace. God bless.